making sense of politics and the cultural divide from a different perspective. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant on News Radio 710 Keel. Hello, citizens. It's a great day in the USA, and it's Monday again. And we're here advancing the cause of American liberty and freedom. I'm C.L. Bryant, and this is America on the Edge, where you'll not live on the edge, you'll have the edge. And we're broadcasting from within the borders of the greatest success story the world has ever known, the United States of America. We invite you to stay a while, and joining me on this journey is my co-host, Stephen Parr. Stephen, tell the folks what we have in our lineup today. CL, we're going to be talking about James Foley, the reporter who was beheaded by ISIS over in Syria. It turns out we could have saved him huh. had the president made a decision sooner. No drama, Obama drops the ball again. And we find out more information about the man who is accused of having murdered him. We're also going to be talking about Ferguson, uh, Missouri. The uh, the victim of the shooting, Michael Brown, was laid to rest today. And the question now is, now what? Now what? And does it matter what happens with the grand jury? It also leads us to our question of the day, because Reverend Al Sharpton uh, spoke at uh, Michael Brown's funeral and we also have a clip of him talking about uh, uh, Frederick Douglass. And our question you have today... A, you have a, a clip of Sharpton talking about Frederick Douglass? We do indeed. Douglass, of course, was a Republican, right? Uh, well, yes. And a conservative, by the yeah, way. You do not trouble me with details. Come and, on now. And Sharpton's... Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. It, let's, let's, facts, schmacks. Let's carry, <laughs> let's carry on. Um, anyways, <laughs> our question of the day is, is the Reverend Al Sharpton the... Uh, Frederick Douglass of our day. I'll give you my answer now. Okay. Please. <laughs> we want to know what you think. Because, you know, it's possible we could be wrong on this. Give us a call. 318-320-KEEL. Is the Reverend Al Sharpton uh, a statesman, a bridge between the White House and the black community? Does he represent what's uh, what should be the next best steps for this country? Is, is he enlightened in his thinking? Let us know. Uh, also on Twitter, at The American Edge. We're also going to be talking to the newest Supreme Court Justice for the state of Louisiana. And we do wish him well. Uh, he has uh, qualified. No one else did. And so the seat will be his uh, when the election is up. We're talking about Scott Creighton. He will be here to uh, talk to us uh, about his role, what he uh, sees going forward. A man of great character. But first... The buzz. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Well, 200 years ago today, the White House was more of a, a charred house. It, was, it wasn't so white. There's was, there were smoke stains coming out the windows. There was soot all over. There was soot all over. Uh, furniture that Thomas Jefferson had bought in Paris was used as kindling. Uh, everything that was in the White House was burned up. Fortunately, Dolly Madison had taken a portrait of George Washington down and out, and they had fled. This is, of course, during the War of 1812. By 1814, the British had sacked Washington, President James Madison's wife. Uh, yes, that's right. Old Dolly was very useful back then. They're still making money off of her today, I see. The... <laughs> with with <the> snacks <laughs> and things. Uh, yes, yes, they are. Uh, by the way, shortly after the the burning of Washington, D.C., the British started marching on Baltimore, and that was when the Star-Spangled Banner was written. It's Francis Scott Key. He was trying to negotiate uh, a, a peace deal, and uh, he was uh, held aboard a British ship during the, uh, the bombardment and of the Baltimore. And the sights he saw yeah. from that encampment inspired him to write... Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave and for it, the land of the free. And it did, indeed. And the, uh, the British were never able to take Baltimore, and uh, eventually that was what led to the end of the war. Fort McHenry. Of course, right after they signed the uh, the peace treaty uh, in Ghent, uh, they were s still slow getting information back. And so the Battle of New Orleans uh, with uh, Jackson actually happened uh, right after the, the peace treaty was signed. So the war was technically over. 
uh, when we had that Battle of New Orleans, which was won by uh, uh, Jackson. That's when they were running through the briars and the brambles. That's right. Through the thicket where the rabbit wouldn't go. Some sad news to mention. Uh, Richard Attenborough uh, passed away this weekend. He was uh, about to turn 90 years old, and you may remember him from Jurassic Park. Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Sutton, welcome to Jurassic Park. Richard Attenborough was a fantastic actor, a great, great actor, and he will be missed. He was also the director of the movie Gandhi, so yes. a, a, a big, big range in his career, and you're right, he, he will be missed. Now, uh, someone, I, I don't think I'll miss this next person, but uh, uh, there's a Hamas leader that's now calling for help in ending the fighting going on between uh, Gaza and Israel. Uh, and he's calling for President Obama to step in. You as the leader of the most powerful uh, state in the world, I ask you to call Israel to stop aggression on Gaza and to lift the siege and open open the cross borders and to rebuild Gaza. This is our demands. So they want Israel to rebuild Gaza, stop the siege, yeah. and stop stop, stop killing them, basically. I, I don't know if he wants Israel to or the U.S. to, but either way, he said these are our demands. Those are his demands, and he's asking yeah. for peace. He's suing for peace, Please stop. and he's got demands. Please stop the fighting. Here are our demands. Continue bombing. Uh, boy. Uh, and, and then he goes even further. Now, this one's through a translator, same, same Hamas leader. He then goes further and says something completely. Completely ridiculous. What's the difference from what Netanyahu is doing and Yalom and the army chief of staff, Gantz, from killing thousands of civilians, children, women, entire neighborhoods, targeting mosques, destroying honor schools and destroying hospitals? What is the difference from what the Nazis did in the 30s and 40s and what Hitler did? This is the real Holocaust. You know, Stephen, what strikes me about this, this guy is truly begging for peace. But then he turns around and insults the people that he's asking. He calls them Nazis. Yeah, right. Here's Just in case he's a little confused, uh, <laughs> no one was launching V-2 rockets from the Warsaw ghettos into Berlin. That did not happen. The no. other thing is the French resistance was not storing ammunition underneath Anne Frank. That's the difference. Absolutely. And, folks... You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant along with Stephen Parr. We'll be back in a minute. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. Have you ever thought, I wish I didn't have to search for the best price on printing or direct mail? Tired of trying to design your own material on some confusing website just to get to the end and it's not that professional look your business needs? Well, stop searching and call Graphic Industries. We've been waiting on your business, ready to help you with your printing and direct mail needs. Graphic Industries offers all types of print, stationery, brochures, flyers, catalogs, door hangers, books, pocket folders, postcards, variable printed letters, and much, much more. Graphic Industries can direct mail for you, too. You can customize a mailing list, target a certain demographic, or just flood the market and get your name in the homes of thousands of potential clients. Lowest prices, best quality, and a faster turn time. Visit us online at graphicindustries.net. Or call us today at 318-222-1100. Graphic Industries, the number one choice of printing and direct mail. If you're in need of a good plumber, perhaps you need to work on your heater, or especially right now with cooling and refrigeration systems. If you need help, give the friendly folks at Premier a call at 222-1980. Hello, everybody. This is Henry Burns. God, faith, and freedom are not free. Many have paid the price. Let freedom ring. What a great radio program. Go get them, CL. 
Doctors Thornton, Pugh, Olier, and Watkins from the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center are excited to tell you about a new made-for-iPhone hearing aid, Resound Links. Resound Links is the fully featured hearing aid designed to connect directly with iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Built with revolutionary technology to bring you a smarter, smaller, and more connected hearing experience. Call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. That's 888-408-6318 to schedule your appointment to learn all about Resound Links. Apple, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch are trademarks of Apple Incorporated, registered in the U.S. and other countries. Once again, call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888 888- 8-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. Join News Radio 710 Keel downtown at Festival Plaza and run or walk for your life from flesh-eating zombies at the Red's Wicked Apple Ale Zombie Run 5K Saturday, September 6th. Then finish strong at the post-race Apocalypse Party with a DJ and music from Caravan. Special thanks to Red's Wicked Apple Ale, Phoenix Underground, The Sandbar, and Sports Spectrum. More information at 710keel.com. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. I'm Stephen Parr. Our question of the day is uh, who is the is Al Sharpton the, the modern day Frederick Douglass? That's what we want to know. We want to know what you guys think. And we have on the phone with us Jerry in Bossier City. Uh, calling in about that question. If you want to call him, by the way, 318-320-KEEL. Uh, Jerry, what do you think about that? Uh, you ha- you have to be joking. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, Jerry, thanks for calling, man. This is CL. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm totally with you. I mean, it, Al Sharpton is in touch with America. He's the most bigoted person in America. No doubt and about it. And if he was truly concerned about deaths of young black people, why isn't he in Chicago? I agree. I totally agree. You know, yesterday, uh, Jerry, he was trying to put that mantle on yeah. himself. He was trying to put the uh, Frederick Douglass mantle on himself. What was that? Meet the Press that he was, he was on. on? Meet the Press. Honey. And yeah. uh, he was trying to put that mantle on, hoping that we... Uh, some some people would, who are sane, who are still sane in this country, would actually believe him. And uh, but man, I want to thank you for calling in. Call in often, and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. We're going to be talking now about what happened in Syria with the death of James Foley. He was a, a reporter, American reporter, and was beheaded. Uh, by ISIS, uh, by the Islamic State. And it turns out that British intelligence has now identified the person they believe who killed James Foley. He is a man who is uh, a a rapper from London, and his name is Abdel Barry. Uh, Now, he's an Arabic rapper? Yes, who lived, who grew up in London. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. In, in Arabic, do you want to hear his? He went by the name uh, El Jenny or Lyricist Jen in London. Let me play a rap. Yeah, for let's you. hear from him this one time, and yeah. then let's hope it's the last time, time we hear from him. We ever hear from him he, again. Here's a freestyle rap he performed on the BBC back in 2012. Give me the pride and the honor like my father. I swear the day they came and took my death. I couldn't have killed a cop or two when I wouldn't look back. Nah. Did he say he could have killed a cop or two, Stephen? That's right, after they came and took his dad. By the way, his dad, just in case you wanted to know, a man named Adele Barry, who was extradited from England in 2012 to the United States to stand trial. He's going to be standing trial in November of this year for the Al-Qaeda bombings of two U.S. embassies in 1998. Stephen, I understand that this rapper, this Arabic rapper, is also has a picture of him holding the head of another victim. Yeah, so Foley is not the only person. If he is indeed the one who killed Foley, he's not the only person that he has beheaded. There's a there's been other pictures that that rapper L Jenny has posted online of him holding someone else's head uh, in Syria. He's a murderer. He's killed an American, and I cannot think of anything 
uh, good enough to send him off this planet. Here's the problem. 500 people from England, 500 English UK citizens have gone to fight for the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq. It is possible those people could leave Syria, go back into England, and then get into the U.S. because by having a U.K. passport, they're going to see less scrutiny coming across. I'm agreeing with Governor Perry. I believe uh, that they're already here. Quite possibly. Yeah. Quite possibly. Here's the thing about this whole story that has made me absolutely angry. We could have saved James Foley. We found out last week that there was a raid. They tried to go in and save him, and by the time they got there, James Foley and other reporters or journalists who had been held by ISIS were no longer in the location where they were being held. The indecisiveness of this administration and this president caused the death of this man. I believe so, because at first I thought, well, you know, hey, nice try, guys. You, you went in, you gave it a good try, and, and these operations don't always work. But then I found out today that the president waited 30 days to make the decision. Military chiefs came to him at the beginning of June, and they said, Mr. President, we can go in and save these journalists. We can go in and get them in Syria. We know where they are. We want to go. We need a go or no-go decision from you now. He waited 30 days until the 1st of July to make the decision by the time they went, the reporters were no longer there. Handsome Kyle, I want you to find out what that 30-day period was, and I want to know how much golf did the president get in between making that decision and the time when they moved these folks and then Foley's dead. This is what happens when you do not have leadership. What we're telling you, folks, is that we knew where Foley and the other journalists were. And because of indecision, today, several rounds of golf later, he's by the, dead. By the way, in answer to your question, he was reported as having played golf six times during that month when Foley could have been that 30-day period uh, from June to July. He played golf six times when he could have made the decision. And, folks, it could have been you. It could have been your son. It could have been any of us. When the head of that journalist came off, it was symbolic of every American head rolling. Uh, look, one of the things that bothers me the most about Barack Obama is that he has made me appreciate Bill Clinton. But in this case, I actually have to give a little bit of respect to Carter. Remember during the hostage crisis in Iran back in the 1979 through 1981? In 1980, they tried to go in with the helicopters into... Okay, it took Carter less than a couple of weeks to make a go, no go decision. It still resulted in failure, but right. even Carter didn't take 30 days to decide whether he was going to try and save people or not. Yeah. Somebody give Jimmy uh, Carter uh, a call and tell him he's off the hook as the worst president that the country has had. This is a pattern of indecision from the president. This isn't the only time. Let's go back to 2008. This is when I first noticed this pattern of indecision from the president during the campaign of August, 2008, Obama had already wrapped up the Democratic nomination. He went on vacation to Hawaii. While he did that, Russia invaded Georgia, not the U.S. state Georgia, but the country of Georgia. Right. It took Obama three days to make any statement about this. This was the future president of the United States. It took him three days to come out and say this. I reiterate my call for Russia to stop its bombing campaign, to stop flights of Russia aircraft in Georgian airspace and withdraw its ground forces from Georgia. And to add to that litany, uh, Stephen, is our U.S. Marine, who I will not let you forget about, Marine Tom, uh, U.S. Marine Tamarisi in a Mexican jail. The president is yet to call his name. How many days has it been? Over I, 150? I believe 154 is where we're at now. Sad state of affairs in this country. The world is like a cauldron that is boiling over. And we're seeing a weak, impotent president who is indecisive and is causing a national security breach for the United States of America. Folks, Georgia lost 20 percent of their territory back in 2008 to Russia because of that invasion. By the way, it took Obama several days to again talk about the Ukraine situation. He was slow to react to that. 
Ukraine's already lost the Crimea to Vladimir Putin. They're about to lose eastern Ukraine to Vladimir Putin. And we don't really hear, uh, yeah, finally some sanctions ratcheting up, but we, again, don't really hear any action. There is no real strong decision on what the U.S. strategy there is other than wait and see. And the military heads, the military chiefs, are also very frustrated by this, although they're not saying so publicly. But we have contacts behind those doors, and we do know that they are very frustrated at the indecisiveness of this president. We don't have a strategy. We don't have a foreign policy anymore with this country, with this uh, president for this country. And folks, this is why I have said uh, before, and I'm saying it again, if he didn't want the job, because evidently he doesn't want the job, right? why run again? Because he's not doing the job. You, you don't have to run again. No, but you're not required to serve two terms. No. You, you can stop after one. If, if you're like, you know what? This is not the job for me. I'd rather go make $200,000 per speech. Yeah. Uh, you can do that. He could do it easily. He could have done that. And, and play golf at the same and, time. And let Hillary run or let Joe run. Uh, he didn't have to do it again. Uh, well, if it was between him and Joe, I'm glad he I'm glad he ran again. Let's also look at, at the well, yeah. Uh, let's look at the difference between how the press has reacted to Obama's indecision as to how they reacted to President Bush. When President Bush was informed that terrorists had attacked the World Trade Center and he waited seven minutes to leave that elementary school classroom, how much criticism has W received for seven minutes? Waves and waves of criticism. How about 30 days? Yeah. 30 days. You, you go. Yes, sir. Mr. President, we can go today. We need a go. No, go. We've got a plan. We've got the capability. We've got the equipment. We've got the men and women. We can days. go today. All we need is permission. 30 days. L well, um, let me let me talk to Joe. Yeah, let's uh, analyze let's, this. Uh, let's see if it's just let's the right. Let's do a study on it. Is it the right thing to do? Uh, let me just. Uh, is it? Is it? Let me, let me be perfectly clear. Yeah, you're going to dress up like in, in Halloween, aren't you? In about a month. Yeah, seriously. Okay, uh, we're not the only ones criticizing. Rince Priebus. This was uh, Rince Priebus this weekend talking about the president's vacation. We're going to have we're going to have Reince on the show too. Uh, uh, yeah, and and well, listen to what he said about the president this weekend. This month, President Obama has been on vacation. He attended his 401st fundraiser. He's now played over 190 rounds of golf as president. Now, we all deserve some time off, but you have to wonder where is priorities. We all watch the news. We see what's happening overseas in places like Iraq and Syria and Ukraine. We see the tensions at home in Missouri. And we lost a young American journalist at the hands of fanatical terrorists. And yet, President Obama is on vacation. Folks, in weeks to come, and you, that's why I want you to stay tuned. One, one hour a day right now is all we ask for. <laughs> but we will have Reince on the show, Reince Priebus, the head of the Republican Party. And um, what he was saying there is the 190 rounds of golf. That just sticks right out in my head, man. Right. And and you would think with that much golf, he'd be a better golfer. We want to know, oh. is uh, Al Sharpton, is Al Sharpton the Frederick Douglass of our time? Let us know. Give us a phone call, 318-320-KEEL. This is America on the Edge, and I'm C.L. Bryant. We will return. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. SB Magazine, North Louisiana's premier publication, is your source for local entertainment, home decor ideas, gardening information, fashion trends, and seasonal gift guides. Every month, we take you behind the scenes at some of Shreveport Bossier's most fun events in Ion SB. And you'll find SB Magazine everywhere. But the best way to make sure you have the most current issue is to subscribe. It's just just $16 for 12 months. Call Debbie today or go to our website, sbmag.net. SB Magazine, the pulse of Shreveport Bowdoin. William F. Duncan doesn't just offer auto, home, and life insurance. He does it with great personal service. William F. Duncan has covered Caddo and DeSoto parishes for over 18 years. Call him today, 318-532-4300. 
Tell him CL sent you. Hey! The most anticipated night of television is finally here. It's time to get back to football and kick off the 2014 NFL season. The kickoff celebration begins Thursday, September 4th, with a special performance by Grammy Award winning musician Pharrell Williams, live outside CenturyLink Field in Seattle. Following the concert, get ready to cheer as the Green Bay Packers take on the Super Bowl champion, the Seattle Seahawks. Tune in live Thursday, September 4th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Bridgestone, the official tire of the NFL. This summer, when looking to reserve your venue for your large gathering, look no further than Giuseppe's on Lion Avenue. Restaurante Giuseppe has the capacity to provide for your private event. From as intimate as two to as grand as 100 people, with space for wedding receptions, rehearsal dinners, business meetings, or any other luncheon or dinner, Giuseppe's has you covered. With a beautiful dining room and spacious dining area, let Giuseppe's take your event from special to spectacular. Chef Giuseppe has been making authentic Italian cuisine for 50 years. Let him give you the meal you and your friends deserve. Contact Giuseppe's on Line Avenue today to book your event at 318-869-4548. That's 318-869-4548. Giuseppe's on Line Avenue. Call today. Every day, we go about our lives driven by routine. Our vision clouded by the very normalcy we take for granted. Countless victims of human trafficking walk among us, invisible. It's time to open our eyes. The Blue Campaign provides a unified voice for those who combat human trafficking, whether it's forced labor, domestic servitude, or the sex trade. Learn what you can do to help by visiting dhs.gov slash blue campaign. September is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Ovarian cancer is the fifth most deadly cancer for women. Early symptoms often go undetected, but early detection is key. Know the symptoms of ovarian cancer. Visit radiologyinfo.org. That's radiologyinfo.org. Giving you the edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. Well, welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. I'm Stephen Parr. We want to know... Is Al Sharpton, the Fred, Frederick Douglass of our time. See, I've had a hard time saying it. Yeah, it, it should It be just hard. doesn't come out naturally. It, it, won't, it shouldn't come out. Yeah. <laughs> no one should ever use the two names in the same breath. <laughs> well, we want to know if you think that uh, you agree with us or if you agree with uh, the Reverend. Give us a call, 318-320-KEEL. You can also send us a tweet on the new finger, fingled Twitter thing. Uh, just send it to at the American Edge. See, I, I don't know about you, but I think this internet's here to stay. Oh yeah, that's, that's a cool thing. It, to yeah, come up with with all the kids there on the on the line. Thing. I kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this weekend, Al Sharpton was on uh, Meet the Press. Yeah, Meet the Depressed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, and he was uh, making a comparison to really a, a revolutionary. Um, who was uh, Frederick Douglass, of course, went to the Lincoln White House. Right. Uh, first uh, African-American to eat dinner at uh, the, the, the Lincoln White House. Right. And this is the thing about Frederick Douglass. And, and, and the reason why the, tw- the twain, the two personalities shall never meet. Yeah. Frederick Douglass. This, this is his story. Runaway slave. Yeah. Uh, Three time runaway slave. He was so, he became so eloquent, which means that his intelligence level had to be incredible. Right. He became so eloquent as a speaker that when he went to England, he actually had to show them the, what they used to call a tree on his back from the whiplashes. Wow. It was actually formed a tree. He had to show the people the lashes on his back to prove that he had been a slave. He had become so eloquent. Wow. When he died, he was the equivalent of a billionaire. He had his own ships that he shipped things himself. This was the uh, personal responsibility personality of Frederick Douglass that said, I'm going to be free and I'm not going to blame anybody from what happened to me in the past. And I'm going to take advantage of the fruits of liberty that's here in America. Al Sharpton, on the other hand, has led more people to a state of mind of enslavement than any. He and Jesse Jackson have led more people to a place of enslavement social enslavement than any other two groups of 
two men in the history of this country. So, so you're saying you don't agree with this? First of all, I'm not a surrogate. I have access to the White House and everywhere going back to Lincoln with Frederick Douglass. Presidents talked to those that were leading at that time. I'm not comparing Mark Morial or Melanie Campbell not to Frederick Douglass, but that's nothing unusual. I went to Ferguson because the family, the grandfather called and asked me to come. The White House called while I was there, talked to me, the head of the NACP and others. So it's not a surrogate. It is a customary, traditional role. So he's taking on the customary, traditional role that a Frederick Douglass would take with the president. My question is, why in the world would this president allow Al Sharpton anywhere close to the Oval Office? Cause that's he, my question. Well, because Valerie Jarrett's already there, and it, so is Eric Holder. That, that's, that's my answer to that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Ferguson situation, uh, Michael Brown was laid to rest today. Yes. Uh, during the VMA Awards, the Video Music Awards, last night on MTV, Raptor Common asked for a moment of silence. The people in Ferguson and St. Louis and communities across the country have used their voices to call for justice and change to let everyone know that each and every one of our lives matters. Hip-hop has always been about truth and has been a powerful instrument of social change. From Melly Mel to Public Enemy to Kendrick Lamar, hip-hop has always presented a voice for the revolution. I want us all to take a moment of silence for Mike Brown and for peace in this country, and in the world. I just don't get it, Stephen. I don't understand how is it we began to elevate this young man to almost sainthood status when we do now know that the original things said about that incident Hands up. Were, were a lie, and that quite possibly a uniformed police officer was physically assaulted, which means that this young man has contributed to his own death, but yet he is now being uh, canonized as perhaps uh, some type of symbol of rebellion. I don't get it. Well, and Common's also doing a little bit of revisionist history with with rap here, because in addition to the names he mentioned, there's also Sister Soldier. There is Public Enemy. Uh, remember, Bleep the Police? Yeah. Uh, that's part of rap history as well. So you can't say it's all about peace and love. And by the way, uh, El Jenny falls into that category as well, the rapper who just beheaded James Foley. I understand the genre of rap, but I fail to see any significant contribution to the furtherance or the betterment of our society. Do you? Uh, Will Smith did say parents don't understand, and I thought that was right on. They did not understand. But it, Will Smith compared but to some of these really guys. The I mean, he's uh, Will Smith, sort of like Perry Comer You're right. when and it the, comes to these guys. And the first rapper on on uh, Top 40 was Blondie with Rapture. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't see the same comparison. Yeah. I, I well, don't see Ella the same Fitzgerald thing. Well, Fitzgerald was basically a rapper. There you go. You she know, was great. But they, they, that, we're, that's way back. That's way back. But oh, she, wait. Man, she was great. Yes, she absolutely was. This is America on the Edge, and I'm C.L. Bryant. We'll be back in a minute. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. Here's another local expert tip from Crystal Auto Collision. It's stressful enough having a car accident, dealing with your auto insurance company, and worrying about how to get around. Your vehicle is the second largest investment you'll make in your life, so it's smart to use a collision shop that comes highly recommended. Your insurer may direct you to their list of approved repair shops, which can be just fine, but some of those agreements between insurance companies and repair shops may call for concessions on the repair side. Ask what the requirements are for the shop to be on the insurance list. Are they required to use only less expensive generic replacement parts instead of original equipment parts, which match your vehicle exactly? Is there a labor or material discounts required, which may diminish the quality of your repair? Instead, ask friends and neighbors for feedback about any shops they've used. And of course, we hope you choose Crystal Auto Collision, serving the Shreveport-Bossier area for 20 years. 
318-752-3300. Is your house just not cool enough when you walk in from work? You deserve to sit in the cool and comfort of your own home after a long, hard day. Give the friendly folks at Premier a call at 222-1980. This is the story of Daniel, who was born two months early. He weighed one pound, seven ounces. His lungs weren't ready. His heart wasn't ready. His brain wasn't ready. At the hospital, the nurses said Daniel was a fighter, and they would do all they could to help him. The doctor said even with the best care, Daniel may never walk. He may never see. He may never learn. Daniel's parents spent night after night at the hospital, watching his every breath, holding his tiny hands, and looking for signs that he was growing stronger. At home, his parents looked around Daniel's empty nursery, at the quiet toys and the still rocker, and they hoped that one day they could sit in that rocking chair and tell this story to their very healthy son. Daniel's is just one of the more than 500,000 stories of babies born prematurely last year. But there's hope for a happy ending. The March of Dimes is funding the research and programs to stop premature birth. You can help bring more babies home healthy. Learn how at marchofdimes.com. Working together for stronger, healthier babies. A few years ago, Steve Faircow's lungs were failing. I don't think I had more than a couple weeks to live. That's when Steve received a lung transplant made possible by an organ donor. Now Steve can do things he never imagined, like climbing 94 floors to the top of a skyscraper. I never knew that breathing could feel this good. It's an incredible gift. What could you make possible as an organ, eye, and tissue donor? Leave behind the gift of life. Go to organdonor.gov, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Rush Limbaugh, the authority for all things right. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Remember, most days I still feel like I'm 18 to 20. I mean, there's bumps in there, of course, but you look back on it on balance, it's not a thing I would change. Weekdays from 11 to 2 on News Radio 710 Kiel. Giving you the edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryan. I am Stephen Parr. We have in studio the newest Supreme Court Justice for the state of Louisiana, Scott Creighton, just qualified at the end of last week, and no one else qualified to run against him. So by, by definition, then, he will be our next Supreme Court Justice. Justice Creighton, we want to congratulate you and welcome you uh, to America on the Edge. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir. I want to ha- ask you this right before we get deep into our interview with you. A lot of people hear the word Supreme Court. Uh, they, of course, know about uh, our, our Supreme Court in D.C. with our nine justices. What is the duty of the Louisiana Supreme Court? What have you now qualified to do? What will your job be? Could you tell our audience that? Well, the, the, the Supreme Court of Louisiana is the highest court of our state, obviously. There are seven justices, and they handle all the legal matters. You, you have to think about it in terms of three branches of government, the legislative branch, the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the Louisiana Supreme Court is at the highest level of our third branch of government. And there are seven justices I am elected from 11 parishes, and, uh, and I was so honored and thrilled and, and, quite frankly, a bit stunned to qualify without any opposition. You received a lot of endorsements uh, during the campaign. Of course, you were assistant district attorney from uh, 1981 to 1990. Uh, you were the president of the Louisiana District Judges Association. You, you've been a judge as well. Uh, wh- why do you think that uh, you were put out and no one else said that they wanted to challenge you? Well, I worked hard. I started about two years ago in terms of campaigning and went all over the state. Uh, And I concentrated, however, in the 11 parishes. That's a lot of square miles to cover. I can tell you my truck has close to 100,000 miles on it now, (laughs) uh, probably 50,000 of which has been put on in the last two years. But uh, I just worked hard. And, and, you know, it it really starts with building a record. And uh, it comes from the heart, uh, to tell you the truth. I started, I graduated from law school in 1980, and I, I loved, I've loved every job I've had since. The assistant DA work was, was tremendous. I started out with misdemeanor prosecution, ended up with a, a death penalty serial killer case that was successfully uh, uh, handled. 
th- thankfully. And, uh, and then, and this is my 24th year as a judge and I love the work and, and, uh, I've been involved in, in, uh, work across the state in terms of leadership for the Louisiana district judges association. I've had a number of programs that I've started that I've absolutely loved their work, but they're, it's, it's, it's I deem it to be a labor of love. Justice Creighton, how does a case reach your desk how does it I well mean, the supreme court it starts with a filing at at uh, the trial court level it could be the city court for 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 Shreveport if it's a if it's a uh, a, a fairly small claim issue or a misdemeanor uh it, it could also start at the district court Caddo district court in 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 Shreveport if it is a felony case a criminal felony case or a case of some magnitude in terms of money or or legal rights at issue and then it would go up to the appellate court, which for us is the Second Circuit Court of Appeal. And, uh, and from there, it can go up and be reviewed by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court basically handles cases that, that, uh, are, are, uh, that where there's a conflict in the circuits or there's an un, unaddressed issue of law, a question of law, and some, and some conflict among the circuits. It, it has exclusive jurisdiction on all capital cases, death penalty cases. It has exclusive jurisdiction on, on uh, lawyer discipline cases. Unfortunately, there are some lawyers out there that have to be disciplined. And that's what? The, uh, <laughs> what? No. You're kidding. I know it's hard to believe. What? Believe uh, hard lawyers to believe. who are unethical? <laughs> Certainly not my no. attorney. No. <laughs> surely, surely not. Uh, we all love our personal attorney, I think, but perhaps the legal profession could use some some uh, improvement in the in the perception. But in any event, uh, lawyer discipline cases go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has the has the authority to discipline uh, lawyers, suspend them if there's been misconduct, disbar them, and the same is true of judges. Judges that have ethical complaints, there's a there's a process through which those cases are handled, and and uh, the the Supreme Court has exclusive appellate jurisdiction on on judicial discipline cases at the federal level judges are appointed correct but at the state level we we vote for them and not just supreme court but uh, also further down yes as a voter I, i've gone into the voting booth in the past and i see two names on the judge race and i haven't heard of either one of them before and i don't know what it takes to make that decision sometimes i'm sure i'm not the only person who's gone in going i don't know who to vote for judge what should people know before they go into the, the ballot box there? What do they need to know to give themselves the information to make a good decision on who would be a good judge? Well, you need to, you, re, you know, the business of being a judge is extremely important, extremely important. We elect judges in the state of Louisiana, and there are other states where we have elected judgeships. Uh, the, the public needs to, to, to research the candidate, go to the website, attend public forums, learn about that candidate, and learn about the candidate's record. You can tell the most about somebody based on what they've done. Let's go back and look at this person's history and see what type of decisions this person has made, both in the criminal arena as well as the civil arena. If the, if they're running for a judgeship the first time, and we do have some Caddo uh, candidates running for judge for the first time, we need to look at what they've done as a lawyer. You know, back, back when I was... Uh, running for judge, I had prosecuted a serial killer, as I said. I had, I had handled 50 jury cases uh, to completion, handled 50 jury cases. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, you know, and that was, as an, uh, that was as a prosecutor. I had a civil practice. I taught at LSUS, taught business law at night at uh, LSUS until my great wife right here told me to stop that because <laughs> we, had, we had small sons at home and they needed our attention yeah. uh, full time. And, and, uh, but, but you can look at the record of the candidate to see, to see what kind of judge that person will make. It's extremely important. And I think the public, they, they care most about a judge when they're in front of a judge. And, and the fact of the matter is we need to be aware of, of who we're voting for and, and be knowledgeable. And, you, and, and these days you can look in the newspaper, you can look in you can look at the websites. You can go to public forums. You can talk about it. And the radio is a good place to learn about, about candidates. Justice Creighton, let me ask you this. Now, we hear a lot about inter- judges interpreting the law, but now lately we're hearing about judges legislating from the bench. Could you share with our audience what the difference is? Well, 
I, I have said repeatedly that if I wanted to be on the legislature, uh, I would I, I would run for that branch of government. My job is to apply the law as written to the facts and the evidence in every case, and not to and not to be a judicial activist and make law, but rather to apply the law as written. The legislature is in charge of writing the law. My job, as I've always seen it now for 24 years, is to apply the law to the facts. We don't want agenda-driven judges from either side, whether it's the left side or the right side or the liberal or the conservative, whatever it is. We need to have judges that apply the written law as, 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 as enacted by our legislature to, to uh, apply that law to the facts as written. And what I have told people all along and what my record demonstrates is that, is that I don't legislate from the bench. And, you know, we've had uh, U.S. Supreme Court uh, justices legislating from the bench, and it's not a good thing. It's, it's bad policy. Uh, one of the things that's in the news, uh, obviously, today, Michael Brown was uh, uh, laid to rest today. The Ferguson shooting's been going on. This is going to eventually end up before a judge, uh, if not the Supreme Court there in Missouri. As a judge looking at some of the things that are coming out, uh, either for the uh, the officer that's out there or the looting, as a judge, what are some of the things that you're going to look at if this case were to, to come or a case similar were to come before you? Well, we, we first need to look at the fact that we have the presumption of innocence in this country. And uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about what facts occurred in this case other than just blurbs on the media, because I've been a little bit tied up in the last few days. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and so I've not, I've not read as deeply as I would normally about, about what the facts are. But in terms of the officer involved in this shooting, and, of course, it's a tragedy. When there's a death, it's a tragedy. We all, I think, agree with that. Uh, we need to look at the facts, however, of exactly what took place and what, what uh, the officer saw, what, what occurred, and accord that officer the presumption of innocence. You know, we need to have an, investig- uh, 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 an investigation of exactly what happened so we learn what the facts are. And if there's probable cause to, to uh, indict that officer for a criminal charge, then so be it. The grand jury can make that decision. The DA can make that decision. Or the federal government can make that decision. But, but uh, there has to be probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed prior to to uh, cast in judgment rapidly, I think we need to look at the facts. And, and uh, this, this is a tough case. And finally, uh, Judge Creighton, your reputation does precede you. Uh, you are, from what we know, to be a man of faith. And we, we certainly hope that you tr- take that faith with you into this endeavor. Our but, country, our state tends, our country in particular, tends to be uh, straying away from the founding principles that has made us great. And I want to wish you well in your endeavor. Anything, final words well, that you would have to say to us? The Creighton family motto is God send grace. And that's what my family lives by. We've been blessed with grace. I've been especially blessed with grace. The first thing I wanted to do on Sunday morning is go to church. We were, my wife Susie and I were in New Orleans, and we, we went to the St. Louis Cathedral uh, which is a magnificent church, and prayed. And, and we are so thankful, and we are so blessed. Folks, we've been on with Justice Scott Creighton, and we do wish the new justice well. This is America on the Edge. I'm C.L. Bryant, along with Stephen Parr. We'll be right back. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr. On News Radio 710 Keel. It's a summer sizzler showcase. You could win a $5,000 gift card to any Louisiana boardwalk store, including Bass Pro Shops. Presented by the Outlets at Louisiana Boardwalk. Look online to win at 710keel.com. If you're tired of getting nickel and dime for your company's marketing needs, GI Marketing Group can help. We're a new, evolved marketing company with no monthly fees or markups and with quicker response times. With GI Marketing Group, there is no outsourcing. We own the production facilities, everything from print, mail, video, digital, and web design. We do it all in-house. Call us today at 318-222-1100 to start saving time and money. Or visit us online at gimarketinggroup.com. 
Doctors Thornton, Pugh, Olier, and Watkins from the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center are excited to tell you about a new made-for-iPhone hearing aid, Resound Links. Resound Links is the fully featured hearing aid designed to connect directly with iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Built with revolutionary technology to bring you a smarter, smaller, and more connected hearing experience. Call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. That's 888-408-6318 to schedule your appointment to learn all about Resound Links. Apple, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch are trademarks of Apple Incorporated, registered in the U.S. and other countries. Once again, call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888 888- 408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. Hello everybody, this is Henry Byrne. God, faith, and freedom are not free. Many have paid the price. Let freedom ring. What a great radio program. Go get them, CL. Roxanne Watson is on a mission. Hello, how are you doing today? She wants more people to register as organ, eye, and tissue donors. Are you an organ donor? Yes, I am. Yay. My goal is to sign up the most people in the United States. <laughs> what drives her? Roxanne's own life was saved through the gift of a heart transplant, made possible by an organ donor. I decided that day that I was going to devote myself to the cause of organ donation and signing people up and honoring my donor by doing that. Now she's back to health, and she's a powerful force, helping to save lives every day through her work. Imagine what you can make possible by leaving behind the gift of life. Eight people can be helped with the major organs, and up to 50 people can be helped with a little bit of everything. And when you think about it that way, that you could help that many people, it's amazing, it really is. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. C.L., we are being heard across the country. We have a Facebook post from Kayla. By the way, we're on 710keel.com. If you're not near a radio when we're on, you want to listen. Kayla in Utah, in Salt Lake City, says it's beyond annoying how they glorify this thug kid who committed a crime right before the incident with the officer. Yeah, Talking I about have Michael some Brown. really good friends up there in Utah, and you know, I know that there was a kid there that was killed uh, by a police officer, a black police officer, just, uh, was it last week? It was two days it, after. It was, it was two days, but, uh, yeah, two days after the Yeah, uh, the two days after with, uh, Michael Brown was shot. Right. And, uh, n- in fact, he was legitimately shot down, you know, without striking anybody was, or any, any he controversy. Trying, he was trying to pull his pants up. A white kid. Yeah. And nobody said anything about that. There's no rioting in, in Salt Lake. Nobody no, those said, Mormons I'm, uh... I'm going to break into the ski shop. That did not happen. <laughs> By the way, we are I'm being heard. Ac- there. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I did. Anyway, uh, we are being heard across the country. If you'd like to uh, advertise on the show, you can give us a phone call, 855-288-6987. That's 855-288-6987. And soon, folks, we will legitimately be uh, streaming live and broadcasting live in syndication across the nation and all of you out there who are looking to advertise on the radio our show is one of the very best to get involved with right now while it is the ground floor we'll soon go to two hours then to three want to thank god for another day and we want to thank our men and women in uniform across the globe Stephen, defending your right and mine to speak our mind here behind these microphones We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. The American soldier understands To protect and defend what we believe And keep America strong and living free See the damage and the pain